Good evening, everyone. This is Robert. RJL Network presents another exciting edition of Inside Pitch. The 1979 season is on the air. Today's date is August 1st, 1979. We got a good matchup here at Comiskey Park. A very important game for, for two teams trying to stay in the playoff race. It is the New York Yankees taking on the Chicago White Sox. The Yankees come into this game with a record of 62 wins and 43 losses. At this moment, they are in, they are in third in the American League East. The White Sox at 50 and 55. Holding on for dear life, they are three wins behind the Texas Rangers for third. So the White Sox got to win some games to try to stay alive here as we get further and further into the deeper into the playoff push and the season. The Yankees historically won this game nine to one. There were uh, they had nine runs and twelve hits. The White Sox had one run and six hits. So this should be an exciting matchup between these two teams tonight as these two big guys, these two big cities will go at each other. So what will happen tonight on Inside Pitch? Only time can tell here at Comiskey Park. As BB BB is first to join us here at the Turnstiles at Comiskey Park and we're all set to begin the month of August. We are now only one month away from the pennant race, the 79 season. Yep, we're getting close to winding it down. Let's see how the rest of the season will go as we now begin the month of August. Let's get to tonight's game. Starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox will be Ken Craybeck. 15 wins, 13 losses, a save, a 3.74 ERA. Craybeck will get the call tonight for the White Sox. And let's see, I did not get my, and I can see that I, I'm really not prepared here. So, but I love it. while I'm doing it, I can show you exactly how this chart is created before we actually get to the game. This chart is designed to help people a little bit with the base running mechanics on balls hit to center, to set, to left, center, and right. So let's take a look real quick at the chart while I got you guys' attention. So let's say we do the Yankees up here. And the White Sox down here. So this is when the Yankees are in the field. This is when the White Sox are in the field. A single to left for a single to left normally is minus two plus one and minus one respectively on the chart. Well, the left fielder for the Yankees in this game is Lou Pinella. He has a plus one arm. So that means that minus two becomes a minus one. The plus one becomes a plus two. And the double minus one becomes a zero. So that's pretty much how you figure that out con constructing the chart here. You know, so you know exactly what you're going to have. So all you got to do is just check the base running rating of the play of the runner in question. It's add or subtract. And of course, if there's one or two, if there's two outs on the board and add or subtract, roll and done. Don't have to worry about making any other uh, combinations. Let's see. Mercer is a plus two. So that would mean that is a plus one in center. A plus, a plus four here, and a plus three. Mercer had a lousy arm. <coughs> right fielder is uh, Jackson. He's a zero, so that would be plus two, plus one, and minus one. And then, of course, for the Whites, and then for the White Sox, left field, Bannister, plus two. So that becomes a zero. That becomes a plus three. The double to left becomes a plus one. Center fielder, Lemon, plus one. So that's zero, plus three, and plus two. And then and then right fielder is Washington, plus one. So he becomes plus three, plus two, plus three, plus two, and zero. So that takes care of that. Should have done that earlier, but not a problem. Baseball demos and Mike Basement Media Productions join us here at Comiskey Park. Well, now that we got everything started, let's begin the game. Let's go to the top of the first. Leading off for the Yankees, second baseman, Willie Randolph. 270 average, five homers, 61 RBIs. We are using black, white, and white dice. The Sox are the home team. Let's get this key American League matchup underway. Craybeck, 5-2. And he gives up a straight home run result. 
Randolph against the lefty would be a four. That's a 14. It is too high. Randolph 2 1. He hits a fly ball to left, and that will be the first out. So he hits one deep, but not deep enough here at Comiskey. One out. And that will bring up the center fielder, Bobby Mercer. 267 average, 15 homers, 55 RBIs. Mercer is at the plate. Craybeck will make the pitch. 2-5. That is a walk. That six will be ball four. Comiskey Park subtracts one from strikeouts and two to walks. Mercer will trot to first on a walk. So Mercer will go to first base and he will hold there. Next batter for the Yankees will be first baseman Thurman Munson. Munson is at first base for tonight's game. A 288 average, three homers, 39 RBIs. Munson will take his will take his plot at the plate. Runner on infield goes to double play depth. And let's see. That is a one. Mercer actually does not get the steal sign. One minus one is a zero. Um, they do get a hit and run possibility, but I'm not going to send Mercer. No hit and run. That's called off. Craybeck will pitch. Two, three. That is a home run chance. Munson a righty. A one to, a one to three is a home run shot. The 10 is too high. Munson, 3-2, but Munson goes ahead and smacks a double into center field. A big hit for Munson. Mercer, a base running rating of three. A double to, a double to center plus two. A one to five. Mercer will score. It is a six. Oh, he may not make it. He may not make it. Center fielder is Lemon. He has a plus one arm, and that is a two, and there is going to be an out. And the throw comes in, and the throw will go to the plate, and Mercer is thrown out at the plate. What a play by Chet Lemon. He gets it and throws home and nails Mercer at the plate. Thurman Munson, however, a base running rating of three. On the two, however, he will take third on the throw. So Munson actually winds up with a triple, actually. But the run is cut down at the plate. And there is two outs. What a play by Chet Lemon in center field. So Munson does hold at third. And he will get he will wind up with a triple, but Mercer thrown out at the plate. Next batter will be right fielder Reginald Martinez Jackson, as uh Al as Al Red Sox fan likes to call him. But I'll just call him Reggie Jackson, and I'll save that name for him. 297 average, 29 bombs, 89 RBIs. Runner on at third. And that is a 12, no play. Craybeck will go ahead and make the pitch. 5-2. That is a home run. Again, Craybeck puts one over the plate. That is a home run result. And Jackson, well, I don't need to roll the 20 on that. Kaboom! High, deep, and gone! Home run, Reggie Jackson! Stadium groans. <sighs> Reggie Jackson, Craybeck goes ahead, pitches Jackson a meatball. He turns it into lasagna, and that is gone. Two nothing in favor of the Yankees. What a hit by Jackson. He smacked that one. And so far, Craybeck not off to a good start here in this game. Next batter for the Yankees will be left fielder Sweet Lou Pinella. 297 average, 11 homers, 69 RBIs. And it's not even October. That is true. Two outs. Craybeck will make the pitch. 3-6 against the righty. That's going to be an out. And it will be a fly ball to center field. Lemon will go ahead and get to that. And he will make the catch and retire the side. Two runs on two hits and a walk. A two-run bomb by Jackson puts the Yankees up 2 nothing here as we go to the bottom of the first. Steeler fan now joins us here at Comiskey Park. Starting pitcher for the New York Yankees in this game was Don Hood. Four wins, a loss, two saves, a 3-2-2 ERA. Hood only had six starts in this in this in 79. But he gets the call here, more relief pitcher. But Hood was the starting to, was the starting pitcher tonight. 
Let's go to the bottom of the first. Leading off for the Sox. First baseman, Mike Squires. 264 average, two homers, 22 RBIs. Hood will go ahead and make the pitch. 3-3. Three, three, strikeout plus 10, and he will get him. Stri I, well, at least I think he will. Yeah, he will. Barely, but he got him. A strikeout plus 10 makes this an 11. Minus 1 is a 10. He barely gets Squires, but that will be a K. One out. Hood had 29 strikeouts that season. John Solner joins us here at Comiskey Park. Next up will be the left fielder, Alan Bannister. He's in left field for tonight's game. 285 average, two homers, 55 RBIs. Hood will go ahead and make the pitch. 5-4, strikeout 11, that's high. Bannister, a 4-6, and that will be a fly ball to right field. And Reggie will make the catch. Two outs. And now we'll see the White Sox designated hitter, Lamar Johnson. 309 average, 12 homers, 74 RBIs. Not a bad year for him, at least as a DH. He could also play a decent first base. And let's see what we got here. Two outs. Hood will make the pitch. 4-3 against the righty. That is a blank. Johnson, 2-6. And Johnson smacks a single to center. He will go to first. And the White Sox get a two-out base runner. Next up will be second baseman George Orta, another underrated player in history. 262 average, 11 homers, 46 RBIs. Johnson on at first. See if anything happening. That is a four and nothing happening. He will stay at first base. Hood will make the pitch. 6-5 against the lefty. That will be an out. And it will be a fly ball to right field. Jackson will get under this one as well. And he will put it away and retire the side. No runs a hit for the White Sox. The Yankees lead after one. It is a 2 nothing lead. We go to the top of the second inning. Leading off for the Yankees will be third baseman Greg Nettles. 253 average, 20 homers, 73 RBIs. Craybeck will go ahead and make the pitch. 2-5. That's a walk. That's six. Uh, it will be a ball four, and Nettles will trot the first. So leadoff walk given to the Bronx Bombers. Here comes the Yankee designated hitter, Roy White. He was DHing in this game. 215 average, three homers, 27 RBIs. Infield does go to double play depth. Nettles really not a threat to do anything, and he will not do anything. Craybeck, 1 5, error on a grounder. White, 6 5. That is a ground ball. It's a ground ball to first. That ball is hit to Squires. His error rating is a three. That's a 17. He'll collect it. Now let's see if they can turn a double play. Two, zero. It remains a two because it was hit to first. Short, uh, short stop pivot prior. It's a minus one. So the only way to turn a double play is on a one. And they don't get it. Nettles is thrown out at second. White will take first. And there is one out. Fielder's choice. Next batter for the Yankees will be their catcher, Jerry Naren. 174, 171 average, four homers, 18 RBIs. Naren was the catcher for this game as Munson is playing first base. Infield at double play depth still. See if anything happening with White on the base pads, and there isn't. Craybeck with the pitch. 6-4, that's an error on a throw. Naren, 3-4, that's going to be a fly ball to center. Lemon will make the catch. And that is the second out. There won't be a throw, obviously, because White stays at first, and there are two down. Infield moves back. Next batter will be the shortstop, Fred Stanley. 200 average, two homers, 14 RBIs. Yankees have an early 2-0 lead here in the top of the second. Nothing happening on the strat. Craybeck will pitch it, 3-6. And against the righty, that's going to be an out. And it will be a fly ball to right field. This time, Washington will get to that, and he will put it away to retire the side. Nothing across except the walk, 
and the Yankees will hold on to their uh, 2 nothing lead here as we go to the bottom of the second. Leading off for the Chai Sox will be another underrated player, and I sometimes wonder why he's not in the Hall of Fame, but definitely Hall the very good, no doubt. Center fielder Chet Lemon. This guy was solid no matter where he played. 318 average, 17 homers, 86 RBIs. An excellent center fielder. Made the, the, the occasional error, all right, but the man could definitely hit. Very good year for him. Hood will make the pitch. 3-4. That's a blank. He's not tired. Lemon, 3-4. And that's a fly ball to left. It'll be caught by Pinella for the out. Next up will be the right fielder, Claude L. Washington. I always figured he would be better than he was, but I'll tell you, sometimes he had some solid seasons. Had a good year in 79, though. 280 average, 13 homers, 66 RBIs, and 131 games played. Not a bad fielder. I have no problem with those stats. Hood with the pitch, 3-6. That's a wild pitch, ball one. Do it again, 4-3 against the lefty. That's going to be an out. And it will be a ground ball to short, taken care of there by Stanley. He'll throw to Munson, two down. Two outs, and now we'll see the catcher, Milt May. 254 average, seven homers, 31 RBIs. The hole soured on Lemon. Ah! RJL Network groans. <sighs> Hood will go ahead and make the pitch. 1-3. That is a range play. May. 3-1. That's a hit ball to right field. And getting over there is Jackson. It's a range play. His, his range is a 2. And he won't get it. That will be a single for May. And he will hold at first. Jackson a little bit out of area there. But really just well hit ball by May. Jackson really had no play on it. Here's the shortstop, Greg Pryor. 275 average, three homers, 34 RBIs. Not a bad season for Pryor. Pretty good in the field, too. Made the occasional error. Runner that runner on first. Men are two outs. That's an 11. May stays put. Hood will go ahead and make the pitch. 3-1 against the righty. That is a blank. Pryor, 1-6. And that's going to be a ground ball to third. Nettles will make the play. He's going to throw to second to get May. And that will retire the side. No runs, a hit for the White Sox. After two, the Yankees hold on to a 2 nothing lead. As Jim Cuddle joins us here at Comiskey Park. Don't encourage Dave. Do not encourage the demos. But I got it. But I got to hand it to you there, uh, David. You come up with some good ones. I got to admit that. So keep them coming, even though I may groan every time you post one. Let's go to the top of the third. As the White Sox hold on to their, as the Yankees hold on to their two nothing lead. Don't feed the Bears and don't encourage the demos. Exactly. Here is Willie Randolph. He'll lead off. He is zero for one. Yankees lead 2-0 here in this game against the White Sox. August 1st, we're starting the month of August. Craybeck, 1-3, strikeout 11, that is high. Randolph, 6-1, that's going to be grounded to short, taken care of by Pryor. One out, the next batter is Mercer. Mercer walked his first time up. Craybeck, he will pitch. 2-6. That is a blank. He's not tired. I'm sorry. What am I? That's my bad. That is wrong. That is actually a 2-6. That is a pitcher result. And I'm going to re-roll the die. That's going to be a 20, so it'll be too high anyway. So sometimes I gotta sometimes I go a little too quick. Mercer will swing. 6-3. And against the lefty, that's grounded to first base. Squires will take it himself. I sometimes wonder why Squires was always was always a squire and was never knighted. I don't know why squires didn't get a knighthood. 
I guess he was always just a squire. Come on, that was funny. Next batter will be Munson. Munson, one for one, got a double, but then turned it into a triple while Mercer was thrown out at home. Craybeck will make the pitch. 5-1. Hit by pitch. 5. Yes, he hit Munson. Pop. Ouch. Munson gets plunked. A zero, but Craybeck a plus 10, and he hits Munson. Munson will drop down to first. First hit batter of the game. And once again, that will bring up Reggie Jackson. Jackson, one for one, with a two-run bomb his first time up. Infield is now a double play depth. Munson really not a threat to do anything. And he's going to stay where he is. Craybeck will settle in, and he will make the pitch. Craybeck, 2-6. That is a pitcher result. Jackson, a lefty. A 1-6 to six is a base hit up the middle. The 9 is high. Jackson, a 3-3, three, three, but he does get a base hit past second, and that will be a single. Jackson is off to a good start. Munson, base running rating of 3, a single past second, will get him to third. He will hold. Jackson with a base hit. And now runners at first and third here, as right now all the offense is being done by Munson and Jackson. Here comes Sweet Lou. Pinella is 0 for 1. Infield is now going to come in, and they're going to try to keep Munson on at third. 2 nothing here. Nobody out. Strategy roll. That is a 2. Jackson does not get the steal sign. The hit and run sign comes up, but, that, but Pinella says, no, I'm going to swing. Craybeck with the pitch. 2-3. That is a home run chance. Pinella a righty. A 1-3. to three. The 12 is high. Pinella, a 6-6, six, six, and Pinella smacks one into left field. That will be a base hit. Munson will come in. To, he will walk on home and score easily. Jackson, a base running rating of two, a single to left will be a a single to left will be a zero. So a one, so a one or a two. Jackson will take third, and he does not. It's a six. He could. There could be an out. Left fielder is Bannister, and that is a one, and yet there's going to be an out. Looks like Bannister is going to do something. Here comes the throw, and it goes to third, and Jackson is gunned down at third base. So Bannister throws it to third, nails Jackson. Pinella, base running rating of three. That was a three. Pinella will advance to second on the throw, but the run does come in to score. So that will become a double for Pinella. It scores a run, but Jackson thrown out at third by Bannister. It is now 3-0. Two outfield assists in the game. Rare, rare that we've done that. Rare that that's happened. Pinella holds at second, but now 3-0 Yankees. Next batter will be Nettles. Nettles is oh is uh walk, walked his first time up. Infield goes back, still one out. Strategy roll that is a ten, nothing happening. Pinella will hold at second. Crayback will make the pitch. Two five, that's a walk. That nine will be ball four. It's outside, and Crayback can't believe it. He thought that should have been a strikeout, but Nettles will walk. He has an eight, but plus ten, two makes him a ten, and that will walk him. And the Yankees remain in business. Here comes White. White is 0 for 1. Infield back to double play depth. And now we'll see what happens here. That is a 15. No play. Yankees already up 3-0 here on the White Sox. Craybeck, a 2-1 against a switch right. That is a blank. White, a 1-3. And he grounds it right back to Craybeck. Let's see if he turns a double play. Two, one, two, one, and let's see, uh, pivot rating, let's see, White is spinning from the right side, so second base will be pivot, and that will be Orta, and he has a zero, so it's grounded back to Craybeck, the only way they have a double play is on a one, they got it, wow, Craybeck turns around, fires to second, taken by Orta, throws to first side, retired, it must have been hard hit. And White grounds out into the 1-4-3 double play.
one run on two hits, a hit batter and a walk. The Yankees get one run of anything, probably should have had more. But White hits a comeback or right back to Craybeck, and Craybeck has plenty of time to turn the double play. <laughs> Doesn't anybody like the Yankees? We go to the bottom of the third. My mom is always uh, saying, how come nobody in the chat likes the Yankees? Leading off for the White Sox, third baseman Kevin Bell. A 245 average, four homers, 22 RBIs, respectable uh, pedestrian at the plate. Good range at third, but he did make frequent errors, though. Hood will go ahead and make the pitch. 4-2 against the righty. That is a blank. Bell, 5-6, and that will be a ground out to second. Randolph will make the play. One down for Squires. Squires got, uh, has not been knighted yet, so he is 0 for 1. Runner on first, Hood with the pitch. 6-3, that is a possible error chance. Squires, 6-1, that's a base hit to center. It'll be a single. Mercer's error rating is a 3, that's a 19. He won't make an error. He gets the ball, and he throws it into the infield. Squires has himself a base hit. So Squires holds at first. Next batter will be Bannister. Bannister is 0 for 1. Infield is at double play depth. I'm very happy to have baseball demos in the chat. I would. I am telling you right now, Dave, I cannot wait for you to start your game of the week for 1986 utilizing four different engines. And I just think you couldn't have chosen four. Very, you, you have no problem with the engines. Stratomatic, inside pitch, payoff pitch, and APA. D Dave, that's going to be a very fun, all right, a very fun game of the week, especially since it's 1986. I think it's really, really good, Dave. I can't wait for you to start it. You still haven't told us what your first, what the first engine will be. Are you going to go in alphabetical order, like, like inside pitch, payoff pitch? Are you going to start with APA? APA, inside, payoff, and strat? You haven't told us what the first, um, what the first engine will be for this Saturday, uh, April 9th. Let's get back to this game, though. Squire's on it first. He got some steal ability. He had 15 stolen bases. The 19 is no good. Bannister does get the bunt sign, but you're down 3 nothing. You're not bunting. Hood with the pitch. 5-3. That's a range play at the park. Comiskey, 6-3. And that's going to be hit the right field. That's going to be a range play for Jackson. His range is a two, and he won't get it. It will be a single plus. Squires automatically makes third. Bannister has to try for second. His base running rating is a four. Jackson a zero, a one to four. Bannister will get to second, and he does not. He turns on the, puts on the brakes and goes back to first. But now the White Sox are in business. Inside pitches first. Okay. I look forward to that absolutely. And remember, you can utilize the chart that I have here to help you out with the with the uh, with the balls hit to the with the balls hit to the outfield. Now runners at the corners. Here comes Johnson. As the White Sox have something going on, they're the the Yankees are going to keep it at double play depth since Johnson does hit into double plays. Johnson, however, is one for one. Strategy roll. That is a two. Squire's not doing anything. Bannister. I think they may just send him in. They're going to. They're going to get the – Bannister get the steal sign. Squires does not. 16 plus 2 is 18. Naren plus 1 is 19. There goes Bannister. The only way he's out is on a 20. And he's thrown out at a 20. you got to be kidding me. A 95% chance to steal, and he gets thrown out. Jerry Naren's up with it, throws to second, they tag him, Bannister is out, and they can't believe it here at Comiskey. Stadium barfs. Blah. Bannister thrown out at second base, two down. They need a 20, and they got it. Now Johnson will bat with two outs and a runner on third. Brian Patterson joins us here at Comiskey Park. Runner on third now with two outs. Then we do the strat. 
That's a 17, nothing happening. Wood will go ahead and pitch. Hood, 1-1 one, one against the righty. That is a blank. Johnson, 5-3, and it's a fly ball to center field. Mercer will move under it. He will put it away. Side retired. Wow, a bad break for the White Sox. No runs, two hits. Yankees still hold to a 3 nothing lead after three. Jerry Naren, a 20 he needs, and he got it. Must not have gotten a good jump. Woodman, 5, 6, 4, joins us here at Comiskey Park. Yes, Dave, D20s are evil. They're sadistic and diabolical. We go to the bottom. Of, we go to the top of the fourth inning, and leading off for the Yankees will be Jerry Naren, and he gets some booze coming from the Comiskey crowd. And they didn't like that, but Jerry Naren throws him out. Unbelievable as it is. So top of the fourth, Craybeck with the pitch, six five. That's a strikeout. The four got him, and that will be a K on Naren. And that is the first strikeout for Craybeck. He had 132 of them in 79, but he only gets his one ear. And the nice sarcastic cheer comes up for striking out Naren. One down here is Stanley. Stanley 0 for 1. Can't stay. It's your daughter's birthday. Came by to count for attendance. Leave a like. Catch her. What? It's your daughter. Your daughter's birthday is. You're putting your daughter's birthday over my stream, Brian. You're putting your daughter's birthday over my stream? Uh, uh, Brian, uh, I, I'm devastated. I can't believe it. Your daughter comes before me? Brian, I, I, you have really got to get your priorities straight. <laughs> have a good time, Brian. Wish her a happy... Tell, 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 says the, the RJL gang says a happy birthday. Enjoy. Craybeck. Two, three. That's a home run chance. Stanley, a righty, a one to three. The seven is high. Stanley, a five, six, and he grounds one to short, and that will be taken care of by Pryor. That's going to be out number two. Oh, by the way, how old is your daughter there, Brian, if you've not left yet? If you've not left yet, how old is, he, how old is she going to be? We go to the... Uh, next batter will be Randolph. Randolph is 0 for 2. Only buying a car comes first. I don't know about that either, BB. Craybeck with the pitch. 3-6 against the righty. That's going to be an out. And that is going to be a fly ball to left. Getting over there will be Bannister. He'll make the catch and retire the side. A 1-2-3 inning for Craybeck. Puts the Yankees down in order. Fifteen years. Ah, I remember when my I remember when my daughter was that age. She's now twenty four, going to be twenty five, and she causes nothing but trouble. But most kids usually do. Bottom of the fourth. Coming on to bat for the White Sox will be George Orta. Orta is zero for one. Hood will make the pitch. One three. That is a range play. Orta, one, two, ground ball right back to Hood. Hood's range is a three, and he won't get it. That will be a single right past him, and the White Sox get a man on. So leadoff runner on for the Chai Sox. He'll hold there. And here comes Lemon. Lemon is 0 for 1. Infield is at double play depth. <laughs> Let's see. Orta had one stolen base that season, but he's not going anywhere. Hood will settle in on Lemon. Here comes the pitch. 6-3. That's a possible error. Lemon, 5-2. Fly ball to right field. Getting over there is Jackson. His error rating is a 3. That's a 1. He's going to drop that ball. That's going to be a drop ball. A fly ball to right. Jackson will drop that ball on a 1. And that was the only way he could do it. So it's a fly ball to right. Orta and Lemon automatically get the base. Orta has a base running rating of three. Does he? And Jackson has a zero arm. Does Orta take third base? 
Yes, he does. And Lemon, a base running rating of three with the one, he will take second. It's a drop fly ball out there in the outfield, and the runners will get on and get an extra base. And that is an E9, and that's the first error on the Yankees. They had no errors historically in this game, but Jackson makes one there. That is a big error, and Hood can't believe it. So runners now at second and third. Here comes Washington. A chance for the White Sox to maybe get some all, to get some all, uh, get, get them some runs here. Three nothing. The infield is going to play in as the Yankees holding a three nothing lead. But that's a big error right there on Reggie Jackson. Strategy roll. That is an eighteen. Nothing happening. Hood will make the pitch. Four four. That is a range play. Washington, 3-1. That's a fly ball to left field. Getting over there is Pinella. Pinella's range is a three. That is a four. He won't get it. And that's going to be hit over his head. And that's going to be a double for Cordell Washington. The White Sox will get, will get advantage of the error. Orta will score. Orta will score. Lemon will score. Washington holds at second. That's a double. It's three to two. Stadium cheers. Yay! Two runs will come in on that double. Neither run is actually neither run is actually charged a hood. Only one runs charged a hood, but that's going to make it a three to two ball game right now. And still nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Infield will now play back. The next batter is May. May is one for one. Remember, the Yankees historically won this game nine to one. And right now they're in a fight for they are in a fight for their um they are in a fight for their baseball lives here, at least in this game. Still no one out. Strategy roll six. Washington stays put. Hood with the pitch. 4-3 against the lefty. That's going to be an out. And it will be a fly ball to center field. Mercer will make the catch. Out number one. Washington, a base running rating of four. Mercer, a plus two. A plus two arm. And, of course, hit the center. Makes it a minus two. So a one to four. Washington will take third, and he will. Deep enough. And now the tying run is at third base. So now with one out, here comes Pryor. And let's see. Pryor is 0 for 1. Claudel Washington on at third. One out. The infield is in. Let's see if anything happening on the strat. That's a 12. The answer is no. Hood will make the pitch. Hood a 4-1 against a righty. That's a blank. Pryor. 2-4, and Pryor hits one hard. That's going to go to the wall in right field. That's going to be a double. This game is tied. Washington will come in to score. Pryor winds up at second. Right fielder Jackson throws it in, but Pryor safe at second. We got a tie game. Stadium cheers. EA. Holy cow. We got a tie game here. What a gigantic error by Reggie Jackson. And now the floodgates have opened up here. And the White Sox have tied this game up. We're tied at three. Prior on at second base. Next batter is Bell. And maybe they're going to go talk to Hood on the mound, see if he's all right. Maybe rattled after that. Maybe rattled after that. Does uh, after that error? And Hood is only and Hood can pitch to one more batter before being tired. So the Yankees may have to go to the bullpen here soon. Hood will make the pitch to Bell. Bell is 0 for one. Strategy roll. That is a 20. Hood has no pickoff chance. Hood will pitch. 1-1 one, one. against the righty. It's a blank. 
Bell. 2-5. That's a ground ball to third. That'll get taken care of by Nettles. Throws to first for out number two. Uh, Pryor will stay at second base. So Pryor holds at second. And now the batter will be Squires. And now Hood is tired. And they're going to see if he can get this inning over with here. The Yankees will probably go to the new pitcher starting the fifth inning. Pryor on at second. Squires is one for two. Nothing. That is a one. Pryor does not get the steal sign. He'll stay put. Hood will now pitch to Squires. Hood, 6-4. That's a walk. That six will be ball four. And Hood can't believe it. He can't believe it. Squires a four, but plus two makes him a six. That is a six. And Squires goes to first. And Hood is livid. As he goes ahead and gives up a walk. And he thought that was a strike. And they and the frame and a nice framed uh pitch by Naren, but nope. Now the runners at first and second for Bannister. And Hood will still continue to pitch, though. Bannister does not hit lefties as well as righties here. Could be Robin Hood of a win. <sighs> Stadium. Groans, or actually RJL Network groans. <sighs> Runners at first and second. Well, that's why they need to knight Squires and make him deal with uh, the Robin with Reggie Jackson. Hood will pick strategy roll seven, no play. Hood five four, and that's going to be a walk chance, not a strikeout chance. Against the lefty, an 8 plus 2 is a 10. The 12 is too high. That will take Hood out of the game no matter what. Bannister, 1-3, and he hits a fly ball to center. So Bannister does not get any. To Bannister can't take advantage of it. Mercer will get to it. He will make the catch and retire the side. But what an inning by the White Sox. Three runs on three hits, one error, and we are tied at three after four. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Leading off for the Yankees will be Bobby Mercer. Mercer is 0 for 1. Craybeck has got plenty of gas left. Now we're a tie ball game here at Comiskey. Craybeck with the pitch. 3-3. Three, three. That is a range play. Mercer, 1-6. A fly ball to right. Getting over there is Washington. His range is a 3. That is a 5. He won't get to it either. That's going to be a single for Mercer. Mercer hits one in front of Washington. Washington decides to play it on the hop, and it's a leadoff base hit. Next batter will be Munson. Munson, 1-for-1. One one, got himself a triple and got hit by a pitch. Infield is at double play depth. Mercer had three stolen bases. The 14 means he stays put. Craybeck will go ahead and make the pitch. Four, six, strikeout, seven, and no, that is high. Munson, four, four, and that ball is hit to center field. That is a 10 against the lefty. Munson will get himself a triple and put the Yankees back in front. Munson goes ahead and smacks one. That's definitely a triple to center field in the deepest corner of Comiskey. Mercer coming around third. He will score. Munson goes to third. His second triple of the game. 4-3 Yankees. Stadium groans. <sighs> Munson is now two for two, two triples, although I do count as a triple even though he had a double, but he did make it to third on the throw, so I still call that a triple. Yankees now back out in front, 4-3, and here comes Reggie. Jackson is two for two, a home run and a single. Infield will come in. Craybeck, anything happening on the bases, a 16 says no. Craybeck will now pitch to Jackson. Here comes the pitch. 2-2. Two, two. Strike out one, and he got him. Struck him out. Jackson goes down for the first time in this game, and it's one out. 
Here comes Pinella. Pinella one for two. He had a double. Munson still on at third. Infield is still in. That's a 15. Nothing happening there. Craybeck will now deal with Sweet Lou. Here comes the pitch. 3-1 against the righty. That's an automatic out. And it will be a fly ball to center field. Getting over there is Lemon. He will make the catch. It's out number two. Pinello was very good with sacrifice flies. A one to four. He'll score Munson. He does not do it on his own. Munson, a base running rating of three. Lemon, a plus one arm. A one to four. Munson will score. And he does. He coming home. He slides in and he is safe. Five to three, Yankees. Stadium groans. <sighs> Sacrifice fly by Pinella in the center that does score Munson. Munson has now scored three of the five runs for the Yankees in this game. And now the Yankees lead 5-3. Here comes Nettles. Nettles has walked twice. Question is, will Craybeck make it to the next inning? He's given up already five runs. Craybeck will make the pitch to Nettles. 5-5, five, five. that is a blank. Nettles, 1-6, and that's ground ball to first. And Squires will get to that one. And he will take it himself. And that will retire the side. Two runs on two hits. And a sacrifice fly puts the Yankees back out in front. It's 5-3. to three. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Lamar Johnson leads off for the White Sox. Yankees are going to go to the bullpen. Right, left, right. He is tired, so they will go to the pen. And they are going to go ahead and bring in their workhorse from that year. And that will be Ron Davis. 14 wins, 2 losses, 9 saves. A 2.85 ERA. Davis will be the second Yankee pitcher. So Ron Davis will pitch to Johnson to start the bottom of the fifth. 5-3 five, in favor of the Bombers. Davis, 4-5. That is a blank. Johnson, 4-3. And that's a ground ball to short. Stanley will take it himself and throw to first. One down. The next batter is Orta. Orta is one for two. Davis with the pitch. 3-3. Three, three. That is a range play. Orta, 4-4. Four, four. It's a ground ball back to Davis. Davis has a range of three. That is a one. Nice play by Davis. He gloves it, and he'll underhand it to first out number two. Orta hit a nice, probably a slow rolling comebacker for Davis to make the play. Two down. And now here comes Lemon. Lemon is 0, for 1, is 0 for 2, but he reached on an error his last time up. Davis will make the pitch. 3-2, that's an error on a grounder. Lemon, 6-3, and that ball is hit to left field. That is a 12, and against the righty, that's going to be too high. And this is going to be a fly out to left. So getting over there will be Pinella, and he will make the catch. And retire the side. A nice job by Davis. One, two, three. Go the Chai Sox. Yankees still lead five to three after five. We go to the top of the sixth. Yankees holding on to a 5-3 lead. Leading off for them will be Roy White. White is 0-2. Craybeck, they're going to let him pitch here. He can pitch the 30 batters. He's got six more left. They're going to see if he can go the sixth inning. But if he gives up another run, that'll be it for him. Craybeck, 6-2. Strikeout, 5. And he got him. Struck him out. And that is strikeout number three for Craybeck. So White goes down. Next up is Naren. Naren is 0 for 2. Craybeck will go ahead and make the pitch. 
five, six, strikeout four, got Naren. Another strikeout for Craybeck. Strikeout number four for him here. And here comes Stanley. Stanley is 0 for 2. Two outs, top of the sixth. Yankees leading. Craybeck will go ahead and make the pitch. 2 5. That's a walk. And that two will be ball four. And Stanley will try it to first. So Craybeck gets two strikeouts and then gives up a walk. And that is the fourth walk he's given up. He had 108 of them in 79. That's a lot. That's a lot, actually. I mean, 108 and 250 innings pitched. That's still about almost. That's still about almost a walk per every inning, a walk per every couple of innings. Actually, that's really not that bad. 250 innings pitched and 108 walks. That really isn't that bad. My bad. I think I'm wrong there. So here comes Randolph with a runner on first. Nothing on the strategy roll. Stanley will stay put at first base. Craybeck will now make the deal. 3-5. That's going to be a walk plus, though that 18 be high enough. Oh, yeah. That's going to be perfect. Randolph walked a lot, and he will trot down to first. Another walk issued by Craybeck. And now the batter will be Mercer. Runners now at first and second. They're going to let Craybeck pitch to Mercer. Mercer does not hit the lefties as well. And he will go ahead and pitch to him. Lefty on lefty. Two outs, top of the sixth inning. 5-3 is your score in this game here at Comiskey. Strategy roll. That is a six. No play. Craybeck will go ahead and make the pitch. 6-5. Strikeout four. And he will strike out the side. Strikeout number five for Craybeck, although he did give up a couple of walks. But that is it. That will be all the Yankees get. He strikes out the side, though. 5-3 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Ron Davis will come back out for the Yankees. One of their better relievers that season. Leading off for the Chai Sox will be Claudel Washington. Washington, one for two. He has a double. 5-3 in favor of the Yankees. Yankees chasing the American League East. White Sox trying to stay relevant and close for third in the American League West. Davis with the pitch. 1-3, strikeout 10. Got him. Struck him out. And that's a K for Davis. One down there. Next batter will be May. May is one for two. Davis, he'll make the deal. 6-2, that is a blank. May, a 1-1, one, one. ground ball to second base. Up with it is Randolph. Munson awaits the, the throw, and he'll get it, and that's two outs. Two down now, and the batter now will be Pryor. Pryor, one for two with a double. Davis looking on. Fans here at Comiskey hoping the White Sox can get a nice little hit here. Keep the inning alive. 5-5. Five, five. Strikeout 12. That's high. Pryor, a 4-3. And that's a ground ball to second base. Randolph is up with it again. Munson gets to the bag. Throws to first. Side retired. A 1-2-3 inning for Davis. After six, the Yankees still hold a 5-3 lead here. We go to the top of the seven. Leading off for the Yankees will be Thurman Munson. He's having a heck of a game tonight, and this game could really help him later in the season. Munson, three, he is he is two for two with two triples and a hit by pitch. So we'll see if Munson can use this game to springboard him further into the year. Davis will go ahead and, not Davis, that should be uh, Craybeck. Craybeck will get back on the mound. You're not playing practice here. Craybeck with the pitch. 6-1. That's an error chance. Munson, 2-1. Base hit to right field. Munson gets his third into the game. It's hit to right. Washington's error rating is a 5. That's a 3. He's going to bobble it out there in the outfield. Munson's going to get extra bases. Munson rounds first. He goes to second. Base running rating of three. Washington a plus one arm. Does Munson take third? No, he does not. He puts on the brakes. 
They'll stay at second base. That's a single and an error. That is an error on Washington. It's an E9. First error on the White Sox. So both teams now have one error in this game. Neither one did make an error historically. But Munson gets his third hit of the game. He is three for three. The only thing he had was a hit batter. So Munson goes to second base. Now the Yankees looking to get more done. And here is Reggie Jackson. The funny thing is, it is Mercer, Munson, and Jackson who are bringing in the runs. Everybody else has not done anything except for Pinella with a sacrifice fly. Infield is back. One out. Munson on at second. And we will see what happens here. Craybeck with the, I should roll strategy first. Strategy roll seven. Craybeck did have pickoff rating. He doesn't get it there. Craybeck, three, two. Wild pitch, 12. Ball one. Ball one. Nice stop there by May. Craybeck will do it again. 4-2 against the lefty. That's walk plus, and that's going to be ball four. Jackson gets on base again. Another walk issued by Craybeck. That's his fifth. I'm sorry, that's his sixth walk, actually. And now runners at first and second. The batter is Pinella, and that is it for Craybeck. He is done. The White Sox will go to the bullpen. And let's see, right, left, switch coming up. And I think they'll probably go with a lefty here. Although Pinella hits lefties a little harder. Let's see. Let's see, we're in the seventh inning, so I can bring in anybody. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, they'll go with a lefty, I think. Uh, let's see here. Coming on to pitch for the White Sox will be Steve Trout. 11 wins, 8 losses, 4 saves, a 3.89 ERA. Trout's job, try to keep it 5-3. to three. And we'll see what he can do. Here comes Lou Pinella. He is 1-3. for three. He's got a double in the game. Infield is at double play depth. Yankees looking to blow this game open a little bit. So here comes Trout. Strategy roll. That is an 8. Nothing happening. Trout will make the pitch. 4-5. That's an error on a grounder. Pinella, 4-3. And that's going to be a fly ball to center. Getting over there will be Lemon. That's out number one. Munson, a base running rating of three. Minus two at the center is one. Lemon plus one is two. A one or a two, Munson will take third. That is a four. He stays at second. One of the rules that I was not using was that even though you have the modification on flyouts in this chart, fly out to set left, center, and right, you still add the outfielder arm or subtract the outfielder arm from the base running ability. Not been doing that uh, earlier on uh, when I learned it's not just a modification, it's also including the outfielder arm. So if you play inside pitch on a fly ball to the outfield, the runner on second. Chance to go to third, you take the modifier, you take the modifier on the flyout plus or minus the outfielder arm to get the final adjusted base running rating. Remember, ABR is always adjusted base running rating. It includes the outfielder arm. Next batter is Nettles. Nettles, Nettles is one, 0 for 1 with two walks. Runners at first and second. Trout will make the pitch, and that's why I did ask. Um, I did ask Chris on that rule, and he says it does include the outfielder arm plus the modification on the flyout. Trout, let's see, strategy roll eight, no play. Trout four six, that is a blank. Nettles gets the swing six one, base hit right field for Greg Nettles. It's a single. Munson a base running rating of three. Single to right, plus two is a five, a one to five. Munson will score, and he does. Munson scores again. That's the fourth run he scored. That was a two. Reggie Jackson, a base running rating of two. He will go to third on the throw. Nettles holds at first. It's a base hit. So Munson comes in to score. And it's an RBI single by Nettles. And it is now 6-3 to three in favor of the Yankees. 
stadium groans. <sighs> Thurman Munson, what a game today. Three for three, two triples, a single, reached an extra base on error, and got hit by a pitch. He has scored four of the six runs. Now the batter is white. White is 0 for 3. Infield will play a double play depth. They're going to try to see if they can get this inning over with. Yankees lead 6-3 now. Strategy rolls are still on. That is an 18. Uh, White's not going to bunt. Trout will make the pitch. And that is a leaner. And it's either a 1 or a 3. And I'm going to re-roll just that die. And it's going to be a 5. So it'll be a 5-2. And that's going to be a blank. White, 6-4. And that's going to be a fly ball to right field. Washington will make the catch. That is out number two. Fly ball to right. White has a sacrifice fly rating of three. He will not bring in Jackson that way. Jackson, a base running rating of two. Washington, a plus one arm. A one to three. Jackson will score. He does not. It wasn't deep enough. Jackson stays at third. So fly out to right. Keeps the runners from getting any more, any, any more runs coming in. And here comes Naren. Naren is 0 for 3. Runners at the corners, two outs, top of the seven. Yankees now lead 6-3. Strategy roll, that is a 4. Nettle's going to stay put. Trout will make the pitch. 4-1 against the lefty. That is a home run result against the left-handed pitcher. Naren needs a 12. That is a 1. Kaboom! That ball is high. That ball is deep to center. The left field going back is Bannister, and that's going to bounce off the roof out there, or in the upper, sorry, in the upper deck of Comiskey Park. That is gone. Jerry Naren gets a home run, a three-run bomb, nine to three Yankees. Stadium barfs. Yeah. Steve Trout pitched Naren a grapefruit, and Naren turned it into fruit salad, and the Yankees are now blown it open. Jerry Naren goes ahead and gets a big time homer, and it is now nine to three in favor of the Yankees here. They did score nine runs historically in the game. Well, they got their nine here. Stanley is up next, and he is 0 for he is 0 for 2. Trout is going to stay out there and see if they can get done with the inning. Trout will make the pitch. 2-6 against the righty. That's blank. Stanley, 3-6, a fly ball to right field. Getting over there will be Washington. He will make the catch and retire the side. Four runs on three hits. And a, and a, a three-run bomb by Jerry Naren, and the Yankees now have a 9-3 to three lead. We are at the seventh inning stretch. Sing, take me out to the ball game, and Chicago, Chicago, you're my kind of town. I'll be right back. Don't forget, we got 10-minute ticker coming up after tonight's game. And we're only going to do two days. We're going to do tonight and tomorrow for August 2nd. Our next game will be August 3rd. That'll be tomorrow night. And we're going to stay in the American League. A big matchup again in the American League. 
as the Texas Rangers are going to take on the Cleveland Indians. A big matchup coming up. The Rangers will have Fergie Jenkins on the mound. The, the Indians will have Rick Wise. A pretty big matchup coming up. The Indians have now taken over first place in the American League East. They lead the Brewers by a half game. The Texas Rangers are in third, and they're holding on to it pretty well. They're holding on to it pretty well. The White Sox trail the Rangers, but the Rangers with a record of 53 and 51, Cleveland 64 and 41. So right now the Indians lead the American League East by a half game. They have taken it from the Brewers. How long that will last is will be up to fast score. So that will be a big game tomorrow night for, for August 3rd. A big matchup. The Rangers and the Indians, Fergie Jenkins and Rick Wise. Should be a fun matchup tomorrow night on Inside Pitch. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Leading off for the White Sox will be Kevin Bell. Ron Davis can pitch to two more batters before retiring. They're going to leave him out there. Yankees now have a 9-3 to lead here. Davis will make the pitch. 1-3, strikeout one, and he got him. Struck him out. Second strikeout for Davis, one down. Next batter will be Squires. Squires is one for two. Got a single and a walk. Davis looking on. He'll make the pitch. 1-4. That's a walk. That 16 is high. Squires, a 4-2. It's a fly ball to right. Jackson will get to this one. He will make sure he makes the catch. And that will be out number two. Davis is now tired. But they're going to let him pitch here. And they will go with Bannister is next. Bannister, one for three. They may let Davis pitch until he fatigues. Davis will go ahead and pitch to Bannister. Two outs, bottom of the seventh. And here comes the pitcher. Comes the pitch, I should say. One, four, walk. 18 is high. Bannister, three, six. It's a ground ball right back to Davis. He's up with it. He'll underhand it to first. Side retired. A nice job by Davis. Nothing across for the White Sox. After seven, the Yankees still hold on to a nine to three lead. That's Cy Young Steeler Jenkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good old. That's why, that's why, that is why Tom Seaver should have five Cy Young, Cy Young Awards. He should have five Cy Young Awards. We go to the top of the eighth. Yankees lead 9-3. to three. Leading off for the Yankees will be Willie Randolph. Trout going to come out of the game. He is done. And they got, what do they got here? They got right, left, right. So the, the White Sox will go with a right-hander here. And they're going to pit. They're going to bring on, they're going to bring on Ed Farmer. Five wins, seven losses, 14 saves, a 2.99 ERA. He was actually their closer. That year, Ed Farmer, he was he was he was picking up in a trade actually earlier in the season. But Ed Farmer now on the White Sox, and they're gonna see if he can close this game out if possible here. Nine to three. Top of the eighth. Farmer will pitch to Randolph. Randolph 0 for 3. Farmer 4-1 against the righty. Strikeout plus. That 10 will be good. And he strikes out Randolph. Nice job. One down. One away, and here comes Mercer. Mercer is one for three. Farmer, he'll go ahead and make the pitch. Four, two against the lefty. That's an out, and it will be a ground ball to third. Taken care of by Bell. He'll throw to first. Two away. And now the batter will be Munson. He's having a night to remember. He is three for three. Two triples, a single. And hit by pitch and has scored four of the nine runs. Farmer will go ahead and make the pitch to Munson. And that is a 2-6. That's a possible error. Munson swings. 1-6. It's a ground ball to second. That ball is hit to Orta. Orta's error rating is a 6. 
That's a 14. Orders got it. He will throw to first to retire the side for the first time in the ball game. Munson is retired. And one, two, three, go the Yankees. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Leading off for the Chai Sox will be Lamar Johnson. He'll bat. We'll see a new pitcher for the Yankees. Davis did a heck of a job. Yankees will go to the bullpen here. And they're going to stick with a righty. And they will go with, they're going to bring out the goose. The goose is loose. Here comes Rich Goose Gossage. Five wins, three losses, 18 saves, a 2-6-2 ERA. Gossage is going to come out and try to close this game out. The goose is loose. Gossage will make the pitch to Johnson here to start the bottom of the eighth. Gossage, 6-4, strikeout 12. That's a little high. Johnson, 5-6, and Johnson leads off with a double into left field. That'll get that'll bounce off the wall there. Pinella's got it, throws it in. Johnson cruises into second. Leadoff double for the White Sox. They got a long way to go, though. But remember, no lead is safe on inside pitch. Here's Orta. Orta one for three. Strategy rolls are off. Gossage will now make the pitch. 6-2, strikeout, 7, and he got him, struck him out. He gets Orta. First strikeout for Gossage, he had 41 of them in 79. Here comes Lemon. Lemon is 0 for 3, but he did reach on an error. Johnson on at second, pitch from Gossage, 4-2. Uh, that's a range play. Lemon, a 5-5. Five, five. That ball is hit to left field. That is a 19 against the righty. That is too high. But it's going to be a range check to left fielder Pinella. Pinella's range is a 3, and he will make the catch. Two outs. Johnson, a base running rating of 2. Fly, becomes a minus 1 on a fly out the left automatically. I'll keep him where he's at. Two down. Plus, you're down by six runs. I really don't think you can take a chance of getting thrown out anyway. Two outs now for Washington. Nice play by Panella out there and left. Washington is one for three. Gossage will make the pitch. 1-1, one, one, strikeout 14. He got him. Struck out Washington. And Gossage is dealing. Second strikeout for him. No runs a hit. For the White Sox, after eight, it is still nine to three in favor of the Yankees. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Ninth inning coming up. Leading off for the Yankees will be Reggie Jackson. Jackson having a pretty good night himself. He's two for three, homered and homered and double. I'm sorry, homered and single. Got thrown out going to third. Also walked, but he scored two of the Yankee runs tonight. Farmer will stay out there and he will pitch. Farmer, two, three. That is a blank. Jackson, six, two. That ball is hit to right field. That is a 20. And against the righty, that just misses his second homer of the night. And that's going to be a fly out to right. Washington is at the wall, and he does make the catch. Jackson can't believe that ball stayed in the park. He thought he powered that one out. One down. Jackson thought he had another one, but that one just died out there. Next up is Pinella. Farmer is now tired. They're going to let him pitch, though. Pinella is one for th one for four. Farmer, he will pitch. 6-2 against the righty. Strikeout six. And that's just too high. Barely. Pinella, a 4-4. Four, four, base hit. That's a second. That's ball hit the center. That will be a single for Pinella. Pinella gets his second hit of the night. And now the batter will be Nettles. Nettles is one for two, singled, walked twice, infield at double play depth. Farmer, 
It's a six-run lead. They're going to leave him out there, see how long he can go. Pinella on it first. Farmer with the pitch. 1-5. That's a walk. That 12 will be ball four. And so now runners at first and second for the Yankees. A walk issued by Farmer. Now the batter will be White. White is 0 for 4. Yankees are going to let him bat. They got a six-run lead. So Roy White will bat against Farmer. Runners at first and second, and that's going to be it for Farmer. He is done. They got to take him out because he is tired. That'll be it for Farmer. The White Sox will go to the bullpen, and I think they will go with a lefty here. And coming on to pitch for the White Sox will be Guy Hoffman. No wins, five losses, two saves, a 5-3-4 ERA. Hoffman will be the fourth White Sox pitcher. So here comes Hoffman. He'll pitch to White. White is 0 for 4, looking for his first hit. One out, top of the ninth. Yankees leading 9-3. to Infield still at double play depth. Hoffman will make the pitch. 6-5. That's a blank. White. 4-4, four, four, and that's going to be a base hit pass short. It will be a single. White gets his first hit of the game. Panella, base running rating of three. Coming around third, he will score. Yankees do get a run. Nettles, a base running rating of two. He will have to hold that second. White holds it first, 10-3 to three in favor of the Yankees. Stadium groans. <sighs> I'm pretty sure we have lots of Yankee fans in the chat tonight as the Yankees are now leading 10 to 3. Next batter will be Naren. Naren had himself got himself a three-run bomb his last time up as he got himself a home run. So he is one for four. Nettles at second. White on at first. We're in the top of the ninth. Yankees now leading 10 to three. Hoffman with the pitch. Three, four against the lefty. Strikeout 11. That'll do it. Struck him out. And that's going to be the second out. Hoffman strikes out Naren, two down. And next up will be Stanley. Stanley is 0 for 3. He does have a walk. Hoffman looking in here. Fans here at Comiskey looking at the scoreboard, knowing this is not going the White Sox way. Hoffman with the pitch. 3-2 against the righty. That is a blank. Stanley, 4-4. Four, four, and it popped it up in the infield. Third baseman, Bell, calling for it. And it will be a pop out to third. And it will retire the side. One run. On two hits, a walk, and the Yankees now lead it 10 to 3. But will we see some ninth inning magic? Can the White Sox somehow get seven runs here in the bottom of the ninth to keep this game alive? Gossage coming up to pitch. Leading off for the White Sox will be Milt May. He will bat. May is one for three. Gossage still has a number of, still has plenty of, uh, still has three batters he can face before tiring. So Gossage will now pitch to May. Bottom of the ninth inning, 10 to three in favor of the Yankees. Gossage will make the pitch. Six, six. That's at the park. Comiskey Park. Five, six. And that's going to be a fly ball to the left. Moving over there is Pinella. He'll make the catch. One out. One down, and the next batter will be Pryor. Pryor is one for three. He'll bat. Gossage looking in on Pryor. The fans here that are left at Comiskey Park, and here comes the pitch. Gossage, 5-1 against the righty. Walk, eight, and that is ball four. Pryor will walk. Pryor trots down to first on a base on balls. What, did you expect a 1-2-3 closing inning at RJL Network? I think not. And here comes Bell. 
Bell is 0 for 3, and I know Steeler fans are about to give me a reminder here, which I'm pretty sure I know what's coming. Bell is 0 for 3, prior on at first. One out here, bottom of the ninth inning. Yankees leading 10 to 3 here. Gossage trying to get this game over. Gossage with the pitch. 6 1, strikeout 11, got him. And two outs. Two men down. And now Gossage is tired, but they're going to let him pitch, try to get the game over. <clears throat> Last chance for the Chai Sox will be Mike Squires. Squires is one for three, has a single and a walk. Two outs. The fans that are left here at Comiskey hoping the White Sox can maybe big a big seven-run two-out rally. Gossage looking in on Squires. Here comes the pitch. 1-1, one, one, strikeout 19, no. Squires gets the swing, 4-4, four, four, and it's a fly ball to left field. Getting over there is Pinella. Pinella's got plenty of room. He's going to have plenty of ball. Takes two steps to his right, puts out his glove. Blop, and the ball falls into it. That's your game. The Yankees go ahead and beat the White Sox tonight. 10-3, to a big win for the Yankees. Stadium groans. <sighs> Nothing across for the White Sox as the Yankees go ahead and get a big win here in Comiskey Park. A 10-3 victory for the Bronx Bombers. Nice win for the Yankees. And they'll take the win here as they will move on and get ready for a home series against the Orioles. They don't play tomorrow night, though. They don't play tomorrow night. So we have a big game coming up later on, but we'll see what happens. But here it is the Yankees beating the White Sox. Final line score coming up. For the Yankees, 10 runs on 11 hits and one error. For the White Sox, three runs on eight hits and one error. The winning pitcher, believe it or not, is Don Hood. He gets the win as the Yankees took the lead in the top of the fifth before Davis took over. So Hood gets the win. Ken Krabeck does pick up the loss. No save, although Gossage and Davis will get holes. So a big win for the Yankees here today at Comiskey Park as they beat the White Sox 10-3. to Don't go away. 10-minute ticker coming right up. It is now time for the 10-minute ticker brought to you by Fast Score Baseball. What? What's that? Hold on a second. Yes? I just got a special report that just came through the line here. Um, I guess I'll... I guess... Really? Really? Okay. I got a special report coming up after the 10-minute ticker, so people, don't go away as soon as the 10-minute ticker is over. So don't leave when the, tick, when the ticker is done. Uh, I got a special report. I'll let you know what it is after ticker. Let's begin with August 1st. The Yankees do get the win here, a 10-3 win on the White Sox. Seattle at the Angels. Let's see. Mariners 12-13. That is one. Angels 16-11. 
And that's one. Wow, they barely go ahead and get that. We got a we got a tie. Mariners roll a six, minus one is five. Angels roll a three, minus two is one. The Mariners will beat the Angels. Boston at Cleveland. Big series there in the American League East. Red Sox, 20, 41, and that is six. Indians, 4, 45, and that is four. A win for the Red Sox. Toronto at Kansas City. Blue Jays, 13, 51. And that is six. Royals, 22, 26. And that is five. Still not high enough. The Blue Jays will beat the Royals. Baltimore at Milwaukee. Baltimore, Orioles, 10, 56. Net is seven. Brewers, 7, 43. And that is four. The Brewers are now beginning to struggle a little bit here. Minnesota. Going against Oakland, Twins, 12-53, and that is six. Oakland, 8-55, and that is six. They tie, so we have extras. And let's see here. Minnesota rolls a one, minus one is zero. Oakland rolls a five, plus three is eight. The A's will beat the Twins. Detroit at Texas. Detroit, 9.52, and that is 5. Rangers, 11.65, that's 9, a win for the Rangers. Padres and the Braves, Padres, 8.22, that is 2. Atlanta, 8.12, Atlanta, 8.12, and that is 1, that'll be a win for the Padres. Dodgers and the Reds. Dodgers, 10, 14, that's two. Reds, 14, 12, and that's one. Wow, the Dodgers beat the Reds. Giants and the Astros. Giants, 3, 62 at six. The Astros, 9, 22, that's two. The Giants will beat the Astros. Cubs and the Expos. Cubs, 13, 66. That's 11. The Expos, 9, 16. That is 2. A win for the Cubs. Cubs are looking very interesting right now. Philadelphia and the Mets. Phillies, 16, 44. And that's 6. Mets, 5, 44. And that is 4. And that will be a win for the Phillies. Cardinals and the Pirates. Cardinals 925, and that is three. Pirates 1165, that's nine. It'll be a win for We Are Family. Moving on to August 2nd, Boston at Milwaukee. Boston 1346, and that is six. Brewers 1453, and that is seven. The Brewers will beat the Red Sox, barely. Padres and the Braves. Padres, 12-52, and that is 6. Atlanta, 5-31, and that is 3. A win for the Padres. Cubs and the Expos. Cubs, 4-41, and that's 3. Expos, 13-21, and that is also 3. We got a tie. Cubs roll a 1. Uh, minus one is zero. Montreal rolls a five plus zero, and the Expos will win the ball game. Philadelphia and the Mets in a doubleheader, game one. Philadelphia, 735, and that is four. Mets, 633, and that is three. The Phillies win game one. Game number two, Phillies, 943, and that's five. Mets, seven. 46, and that's also five. We have extras in that game. Phillies roll a three, uh, plus four is seven. Mets roll a one, uh, minus one is zero. The Phillies will win both games from the Mets in the doubleheader. Just shows you how bad my Mets were in 79. Cardinals and the Pirates. Cardinals. 
Let's see. St. Louis, 12, 26, and that is four. Pirates, 4, 24, and that is two. And that will be a win for the Cardinals. That is your 10-minute ticker. If your team won tonight, congratulations. If they didn't, there's always tomorrow. And tomorrow will be August 3rd. We will be at the Mistake by the Lake. Cleveland Municipal Stadium as the Texas Rangers will take on the Cleveland Indians. Fergie Jenkins for the Rangers and Rick Wise for the Indians. A very important matchup in the American League. So don't miss that game tomorrow night. Be there or be square. I usually say goodbye to everybody in the chat. However, a special report just came across my desk. And it involves a special report just came across my desk. And it happens to involve and it happens to involve that guy. Thurman Lee Munson was an American professional baseball catcher who played eleven seasons in Major League Baseball with the New York Yankees from 1969 until his death in 1979. A seven-time All-Star, Munson had a career batting average of 292 with 113 home runs and 701 runs batted in. Known for his outstanding fielding, he won the Gold Glove Award in three consecutive years, from 73 to 75. Born in Akron, Ohio, Munson was selected as the fourth pick of the 1968 MLB Draft and was named as the catcher on the 1968 College Baseball All-American team. Munson hit over 300 in his two seasons in the minor leagues, establishing himself as a top prospect. He became the Yankees' starting catcher late in the 1969 season, and after his first complete season in 1970, in which he batted 302, he was voted American League Rookie of the Year. Considered the heart and soul, quote, of the Yankees, Munson was named captain of the Yankees in 1976, the team's first since Lou Gehrig. That same year, he won the American League Most Valuable Player Award, making him the only Yankee to win the Rookie of the Year and MVP awards. As captain, Munson helped lead the Yankees to three consecutive World Series appearances from 1976 to 1978 winning championships in the latter two years. He is the first player in baseball history to be named a college baseball All-American and then in Major League Baseball win a Rookie of the Year Award, MVP Award, Gold Glove Award, and World Series Championship. He is also the only catcher in MLB postseason history to record at least a 300-plus batting average, 20 RBIs, and 20 defensive caught stealings. On August 2nd, 1979, during the 1979 season for the Yankees, Thurman Munson died at age 32 while practicing landing his Cessna Citation ISB aircraft at Akron Canton Airport. He suffered a broken neck as a result of the crash, and his cause of death was asphyxiation. The Yankees honored him by immediately retiring his uniform 15 and dedicating a plaque to him, a plaque to him in Monument Park. Thurman Munson, rest in peace. Have a good night, everyone. We'll see you guys tomorrow.